Ombudsman is an unusual name for what's a really important service. So for Ombuds Day this year, we asked our members, how do Ombudsmen make a difference? When things go wrong, and it's not being possible to resolve the issue with the organisation concerned, what can an Ombudsman do to put things right? If it's decided that the complaint is justified, the appropriate Ombud service will try and resolve the complaint, recommending what the organisation should do. This might be an explanation, an apology or compensation. Different Ombudsmen have different powers. At the Pensions Ombudsman, our decisions are legally binding on both the respondent and the complainant, and the awards we can make to rectify the complaint are unlimited. In the first instance, we try and resolve the complaint informally, and then resort to using our powers when necessary. If the situation caused significant distress and inconvenience, we can make an award in recognition of this. If Ombudsmen receive a number of complaints on the same issue, they can raise it with the organisation, government department or regulatory body, so that things can be changed and improved for many more people than just those that complained. Having complete and unhindered access to information is important for the work of my office and also for all Ombudsman bodies. European governments recognised this last year when they embedded the fundamental right of access to information by Ombudsman in the Venice Principles. Since then I have been working with the Chief Constable and the Police Service of Northern Ireland to ensure that I have access to all the information I need when I investigate complaints about police misconduct or criminality. This is important. I felt that the work should be as far as possible transparent and open and therefore the, for the first time ever I agreed with the Chief Constable that our MOU around unfettered access to information should be published. I'm pleased to say, to say that the MOU is now on our website and therefore I believe the public can have confidence in the police complaint system in Northern Ireland and also in my office that I have full and unfettered access to information. This I believe is a cornerstone of all Ombudsman's offices. How do Ombudsman make a difference? Well, we can and we do make a difference, but we can only do that wherever we are in the world if we maintain our independence, so we have to guard it zealously. The importance of our independence is threefold. One, we usually Ombudsman organisations are small in relation to the organisations they are charged with investigating, so to be small and agile and independent is one reason. The second one is that we need credibility with all of our stakeholders no matter where they are and our independence, our commitment to the process rather than to any particular party will underscore that. And finally, it's because our recommendations will only be effective and uh, paid attention to and abided by if the organisation is respected for its independence. Hello, my name's Richard Blakeway. I'm the Housing Ombudsman. One of the ways that we've made a difference this year is to publish a complaint handling code. It sets a standard across our membership to improve the awareness, accessibility and speed of complaint resolution. It's one of the ways in which we're sharing our insight and knowledge to the benefit of residents and landlords. We think that an Ombuds service like the OIA can make a difference by putting people first and by acting kindly. When someone complains to an Ombuds service, they often feel upset by how their complaint has been handled as well as whatever has gone wrong in the first place. We look at complaints from students in higher education. In our experience, people who have complained can feel as if they've become a problem rather than a person. It can feel as if getting the problem through the process is more important than sorting out what has gone wrong for the person. We encourage people responding to complaints to focus on putting things right, not on who is to blame for what went wrong. Kindness can move people away from conflict to a more constructive approach. For us, this means taking time to understand what is really worrying the person. It means listening and explaining our decisions as simply and clearly as we can. And it even means thanking someone for showing us where something can be improved. Hi, my name is Nick Bennett. I'm the Public Service Ombudsman for Wales. On Ombudsman's Day, we talk about making a difference. And I'm really glad that now in Wales, we have own initiative powers and that we've got to be using those powers for our first investigation, 
looking at the assessment and review of homelessness in Wales. I can think of no better example of helping a vulnerable group and giving a voice to the voiceless during this pandemic. I think that's what making a difference is all about. Thierry, Bismisha, Ronan O'Donnell and Commissioner Tsanga in Aaron, Agus Kahirlach er Orum, Ambudsman Neheran, Agus on Tachtor Tam de Rini in Yovna, Gurfu Aguni, Tangwali in a Lehefigi Ambudsman, Mata Garan Agi, Nachfazer Aretach, Agus Masmin Livgutuk Mudzagaur Uri, Tom Zaguni Sasta, Ishini Yena. I'm the chair of the Irish Ombudsman Forum and the Language Commissioner in Ireland. My name is Ronan O'Donnell. There are seven Ombudsman's offices in Ireland and on International Ombudsman's Day, I'd like to make a plea to people to contact our offices if they ever need any help in resolving complaints or any issues they may have. We make a difference by speaking up for those with vulnerabilities. We recognise that being vulnerable is more than a label given to groups of people and so focus on vulnerability, such as, for example, poor mental health, disability, being a child in care or being elderly or infirm. We also understand that someone who would usually cope can have a vulnerability because of a life event, including making or being the subject of a complaint. We shine a light on both systemic issues and those that affect individuals with vulnerabilities. We drive improvements to quality and accessibility of services, complemented by supportive and accessible complaints and redress systems. As Ombudsman, most of the work of my office is dealing with complaints from members of the public about public services. However, not everyone can reach my office in this way, so we use our own initiative powers to make sure that people who can't otherwise be heard have their concerns dealt with also. Our first major own initiative investigation was into health complaints, and we brought about improvements into the way people can make complaints and in the way their complaints are dealt with. Our major own initiative investigation at the moment is looking at the needs of under 65s in care homes for the elderly. We believe that they should be able to take part in their communities and that they're currently denied opportunities to do this. Own initiative powers give an ombudsman the opportunity to hear the voice of the voiceless. Our job is to make a difference. To make a difference for the many individuals who come to our office having experienced difficulties and sometimes even grief and trauma. And while we can't take that away, we can and do make a difference by independently providing investigation, redress and sometimes even closure. But our job is also to make a difference for the many, to build a picture and a pattern of the broader changes that are needed and to engage and learn with our public services so that we don't keep repeating the same mistakes. It is also to be inclusive and accessible, to actively reach out to those citizens who are disadvantaged and excluded so that they know how to find us if they need us and also know the difference we can make. Hi folks, Doug Melville here from the Channel Islands Financial Ombudsman. For Ombuds Day, I thought we would speak to the role that we play in balancing those inherently unbalanced relationships between consumers and their financial services providers. Firstly, we uh, listen to both sides, and particularly the consumer, to give them a voice for their complaint. Secondly, we help them articulate their complaint in ways that the financial service provider can understand and hopefully respond to quickly. Thirdly, we take an inquisitorial approach to help surface the evidence that validates their complaint. And then fourthly and finally, I think what we look to is beyond what the law and what regulation might strictly say, to apply a fairness and reasonability test and where we find merit to compensate for the economic loss and for any distress or inconvenience that had been caused to the consumer. That's it. Take care. Bye. The Property Ombudsman has introduced a consumer forum and an industry forum in the last two years. The reason we've done this is because we're always looking at ways to improve our reach to both better educate consumers and to raise standards in the industry. 
And what we find is that having these two fora means that we can raise issues of systemic concern causing consumer detriment, and other people can raise issues of potential concern. We can get the two fora to talk to each other, and what we can then do is find ways to make sure that there is better consumer protection in place going forwards. For me, where we make the most difference is where, as a result of one complaint, one investigation, one set of recommendations, we make a significant difference to the lives of many. So an example I can give you is we received a complaint about a young child who was out of education, had special educational needs, and was receiving no alternative provision. That child was receiving no education. As a result of our investigation, his own situation was resolved, but we also asked the council to conduct a detailed audit of all children in its area to whom it owed a duty currently out of education and to develop an action plan to satisfy itself that each and every one of those children had suitable provision in place. One complaint, one investigation impacted significantly on the lives of many. We've been working with people and organisations to promote high quality, consistent complaints handling. That's what ombudsmen do to make a difference. We want people to be able to speak up when things go wrong. We want organisations to be held accountable for their mistakes. And we want everyone to learn so that the process is better. We're currently working with the National Health Service to create a single set of standards called the Complaint Standards Framework. And in this, leaders throughout the organisation will be encouraged to learn from complaints and ensure that people who do complain get the redress that they need to make the organisation better. At Ombudsman Services we work to deliver trust and confidence in essential services like energy and telecommunications. Now each of those sectors has enormous challenges over the next few years. Think about building back better from Covid, massive infrastructure project, projects like 5G and full fibre and of course the journey to net zero. And each of those things is going to require consumers to change their behaviour but they'll only do that if they trust those services to deliver for them. And that's where we come in, we build trust by being the place that consumers can go to when things go wrong and more importantly using that insight to deliver these things better in the first place. Hello, my name is Willette Pratt, and I'm a Senior Investigative Officer at the Office of the Complaints Commission, Turks and Caicos Islands. And I'm here today to tell you how the Ombudsman of the Turks and Caicos Islands can make a difference. The Office of the Complaints Commission is responsible for governing maladministration within the public service. So the question is, what is maladministration? I will take the time to list a few areas of maladministration. Maladministration is a continuous delay in the process or procedure by a ministry or a government department. Maladministration can also be a continuous delay in an application for a government service. Maladministration can also be where a public officer fails to follow policy or procedure or legislation. Should you face any of these I've just listed, feel free to come and lodge a complaint with us here at the Complaints Commission, Turks and Caicos Islands. We're the Garda Síochána Ombudsman Commission and we deal with complaints about the Garda Síochána, that is, the Irish Police Service. We provide an important service to the Irish public where anyone can make a complaint to us about the police. We independently investigate these complaints, which can involve serious matters such as deaths in custody or assaults, or other non-criminal issues. In some cases, these matters result in prosecutions and convictions. In others, we try to resolve the matter informally with the Garda Síochána without having to go through a formal complaints process. This can result in a better outcome for both the person complaining and the police officer involved. Police officers can also come to us to make protected disclosures in confidence. Visit our website, gardaombudsman.ie or follow us on Twitter, at Garda Ombudsman, to find out more.
Dyn ni'n cynnig gwasanaeth am ddim er mwyn diogelu chawl i chi yn yr iaith Gymraeg, a gostwch chi'n dod ar draws unrhyw broblem efo unrhyw corff gyhoeddus, mae yna gyflych chi gysylltu am ni. We offer a free service to protect your right to deal with public bodies in the Welsh language. So if you have any difficulties with those bodies regarding your ability to deal with them in Welsh, please contact us. So hopefully you've now got a better idea of what an ombudsman does and the difference that they can make to people's lives. If you've got a problem that one of our members could help with, please do contact them directly or you can find their contact details on our website.